This happened uh, long, long ago, in uh, about 2008, when uh, we thought for the first time that it might make sense to bring together a larger group of researchers from different disciplines to look at the topic of uh, how trees perceive stress, environmental stress. And as a dendrochronologist myself, so I'm doing tree ring research, um, I have a certain perspective. But uh, I was specifically interested to learn, about, uh, learn more about other disciplines. So to get in contact with uh, colleagues from other disciplines like ecophysiology, like uh, forestry, like forest modeling, uh, like forest genetics. And at the end of our action, we have been about two, uh, 350 people, I think, up to now. And we want to really cross our message. Um, not only to people coming from outside, but also we want to develop a good formula to update each other so that everybody leaves from this cost action with the impression we did a great thing here together and this is something we can do further things with. We were thinking about how can we how can we translate everything what we are doing, which is quite very complex because we have many, many different methods and, and results. How can we put that um, to something understandable for anyone that would drop in from a scientist to just our parents, for example, or our friends? Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking that we could like make different spots where people could just briefly see what we are doing. And there, for example, I have a part because I made a three dimensional reconstruction of vessels and so you can see on a 3D movie you can put your 3D glasses and you can see a 3D movie of vessels turning around and, and you can have an insight in, in the wood. So we are presenting a study we've been conducting in which we first collected a database relating radial growth of trees so from tree cores looking at the annual growth rings with mortality and the reason for that is that one of the big questions we have at the moment in, in forest ecology is why, well, why and how trees die so that we can use this information in prospective models. We hope that we will be able to find specific growth patterns that will inform models of tree mortality. And actually, we already have some, some preliminary results showing, showing that. Um, we, we will show here, we have called it the twittering tree. So, uh, and that also fits a little bit in what we call then in Belgium the talking forest. So, so, um, and the idea is indeed due to the fact that we monitor on the plant, so we measure sap flow, we measure the growth of the, the tree, and with a new technology that we can have wireless sensors, that we can send all the data to the cloud, that we can visualize it on, on a tablet or an, an, uh, an iPhone or an, a mobile phone, we can bring the science where we yeah, do science and make publications of, we can bring it to the public because they can also see like this cycling and, and this diurnal rhythm of uh, the trees. So the tree can tell how it's responding to the climate and we make it a little bit like visual for the public by tweeting these, these small messages. People from different disciplines, they use different uh, methods and they also use in, in some ways a different language, how they uh, tackle problems and how, how they do their analysis. So one thing is to bring people together and to learn to understand uh, to each other and to, to, to work on uh, common issues. Um, a second step is then that uh, uh, realizing the integration, so realizing really the different perspectives and research results that you get from the various disciplines, to bring them together and to, get to, to go to new insights because I really um, I'm convinced that you if you get uh, a problem illustrate or seen from different sides you will get different insights than just working from your own perspective mm -hmm. and that means that it's uh, uh, extremely inspiring to uh, to work in that way because you learn different ways of thinking and uh, I have found that people in, in our cost action they are very interested to learn from each other and to see what other people are doing and how they are doing that and this is, I mean, science nowadays is very compartmentalized, so really there's opportunities of having cross talks between different fields or subfields are very, very, very precious. And that's actually one of the reasons why we, we ended up doing this, this project on this database, because it's, I mean, we really have here people with expertise on the dendrochronology, also people with expertise on the modeling side, people with the expertise on the more on the, the mechanistic side, the mechanisms of, of tree mortality. So that's one important aspect. The second important aspect is that the cost action brings together people from many different labs and countries and working in very different environments. So it really gives you the human 
power and experience to really tackle a global database like this one. And it goes much faster in a way that you think about your science. Maybe that's, that's the best I can say. That's really what changed. And that changes a lot because it's the daily scientific life that you think faster, you think in different possibilities, and you also know how to put them into practice with this kind of a bigger group. And, and instead of like being individually, ah, I should do this and that, you think more as a group. Like, ah, yeah, I can do this and that, and then this one can help here, and we can make that. And because of you do that, you, you make these bonds, you, you suddenly have a much larger possibility of things to do with your sampling. So once I was invited by Ute, the chair of uh, the cost section, to give a talk on, on measuring and modeling. And so I thought, okay, I will present a little bit what we are doing in the lab in our small forest in Belgium. And, uh, and it was amazing how the cost community responded to that because they saw the value for science, they saw the value for education. And then I thought, okay, this has to become bigger than what I had in mind, like for in my small Belgium, why not having twittering trees in Germany? And that, is the, that was the idea and, and yeah, how the idea was born to get a twittering tree in, uh, in Germany and probably many more will, uh, will follow across Europe. I think it's quite amazing. If you consider what has been achieved and also considering that, I mean, the funding is only to really get people together and discuss and maybe facilitate workshops and meetings, which is what we've been doing. But as a result of that, I mean, a huge amount of things came out. Do we continue with the research we have been doing or developing uh, and the gaps that we discover in this cost action? So how do we continue working in this community that has been established within the last four years? And I see a lot of chances because we are already a multidisciplinary community. So um, during these four years a lot of really important research questions evolved and they are mainly uh, uh, dealing with processes going on in trees to uh, react to extreme events and I think these are really really very important to answer the big questions. I just um, met a lot of people here and one of them was Jordi Martinez Villalta and we had just out of, of enthusiasm of being here in these uh, meetings we came up with an idea we translated it into a project and we were like okay let's just try. So it, it's a nice story actually because it's she will be working on a project I had already uh, submitted and was funded and was not specifically related to the cost action but as a result of this collaboration we will expand it to measure things about boot anatomy which is uh, an expertise I didn't have before uh, we didn't have in our lab and this is completely a result of the cost action. I started as an assistant at the laboratory of plant ecology under the supervision of uh, Professor Cathy Steppe um, where, I, where I also am a PhD student and um, so the next six years now already five and a half years, um, I will try to expand the network, the treewatch.net uh, uh, network, so include more trees in it, and really try to understand the processes, not only hypothesis, but really uh, provide evidence that these are the processes behind growth, behind uh, step flow, and so on. Then, after we understand the processes, I will try to make some kind of indicator so that we can calculate in real time an indicator for each tree. Uh, and then within the network, we can interpolate between the, def the different trees and make some kind of dynamic uh, map of all the trees. With people from Belgium, but hopefully also within a larger network where we can get funding for them or individual labs that have a little bit of funding to install the different uh, trees. And that we can then have indeed this uh, network of trees across uh, Europe, that we have our maps, that we have the models uh, that are improved. So that is a bit the, the big ambition, that treewatch.net, which is now, well, till yesterday Belgium, 
now already Belgium and Germany and within a couple of months probably also uh, uh, the Netherlands. But that it will get then uh, a widespread across uh, yeah, the globe, let's say. Yeah. I was very much focused on structure and exactly how this structure influenced the functioning of trees. And it was very much on a tree scale. And what I'm doing now during this Marie Curie is going from this structure, and that's the expertise that I bring into um, the work that Kriav is, is doing. It's like, how can we translate this structure into a, a larger scale and going from trees to patches and forest patches mm -hmm. up to the whole forest and up to the whole regional scale of that. We, we planned and we actually already did uh, measure hydraulic properties like vulnerability to xylem embolism or hydraulic conductivities, these type of things. And with Lise, what we will be able to do, and we already, she already started, is to really connect this to the boot anatomical properties. So really go one step down below mm -hmm. and really see what are the me mechanic determinants of the, maybe for example, hydraulic properties we are seeing. So we will really cover, I think it's, it's a very nice project. I mean, it covers the whole spectrum from really the cell level, which is the boot anatomy, to the demography of forests through the levels of uh, tissue and functional tissue properties, individual trees, etc. So, uh, and yeah, that's that's the beauty of connecting people with different backgrounds and expertise. Yeah, I mean, you cannot you cannot do that by yourself because no one knows <laughs> enough. I was already convinced that that individuals can contribute to large scale modeling, for example. But by really being forced to think how, I'm well. I yeah. Now I have like okay. We will be able to do that, and that gives a very nice feeling also for to continue in research, to say okay. I'm well. That you think that you are on the right track mm -hmm. to to yeah to improve uh, the the climate projections, which which was also then very uh, important in politics for uh, taking decisions mm -hmm. and if we could contribute a little bit to that yeah i think yeah we have reached a very nice goal then uh, with our twittering and uh, talking uh, trees uh, yeah and now the um, uh, the challenge is to integrate this with uh, with other methods that have been used and that's, uh, that are used currently to answer big questions like uh, what are the implications of climate change, what are implications for growth of trees, what uh, are implications for mortality, what, uh, what are implications for carbon storage and sequestration. So I think uh, we can play a very uh, relevant role and this is where we see our niche. Um, and if I say we, I mean the community, the cross trees community. So I sincerely hope that we can continue by doing projects on the national level where we can develop inside each country based on uh, what we have been uh, learning from this cost action um, in PhD projects and even in master studies or in postdoc studies that you continue our, we can continue our way but also that we can um, develop a set up international projects which is extremely important like the twittering tree also showed I mean this monitoring idea and uh, the network only works if you have uh, if you do it on larger uh, scale, uh, preferably global, but uh, it would be nice to start in Europe here. And we have the network now. This is where the, uh, the questions are. And uh, so I really hope that we will get also support from national foundations, but also from the European foundations to, to go ahead with this research. Mm -hmm.